Hey everyone, this is Josh with Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's episode is dedicated to another kid by the name of Josh, and he asked about improv, um, how he could improve his improvisation, and some different techniques we could uh, apply to maybe a basic piece to make it sound a little jazzier or a little bit more desirable. I am definitely not like a master at improv by any means, but I have experimented a lot with it, so hopefully I'm able to help a bit. And um, some of these concepts might be easier if you write them down as I'm explaining them, because they're, they can get really confusing just trying to remember them. Um, I know when I was first learning it, it helped me to write it down a lot. So maybe we'll just take somewhere over the rainbow. So. basic outline of the piece. Um, I know I missed a note in there. Um, so that was a little bit of improv for you there. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So anyway, uh, right here, what's going on is um, what, what are we going to want to do? We're going to want to uh, expound some of the left hand. So rather than just doing this basic chord in the left hand, this uh, root, third, and fifth. And before I even explain that, realize that C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Um, that scale degree one is C. Scale degree two, D. Three, E, four, F, five, G, six, A, seven, B, and then you back to one with C. So if I say like the third, the fifth, the seventh, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's within, it's within the chord that I'm working with. So in G major, if I'm working with a G major chord, um, G would be 1, A would be 2, B is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. Okay, so I'm going to refer a lot to the root. That's just 1, the 3rd, 5th, all those types of things. So what I like to do is rather than just do a basic triad, I like to expand that into a 10th. And even if your hands aren't big enough to reach a 10th, you can always roll it. It sounds really desirable. So uh, root, 5th, 10th. Or in other words, a third, an octave up. That's the same thing as a tenth. So, so pretty cool. Now let's add um, that there are things called non-chord tones and there are things called chord tones. Okay, so the chord tones are notes that are within that chord. So any C, E, G on the piano would be a chord tone. Anything else would be a non-chord tone. So let's throw in a non-chord tone. I like that. So I did a root, fifth, root, second, third. And that pattern right there. Improvisation technique. It's a really good outline and it's somewhere to start. So right here, I'm gonna throw in a major red. Sometimes you can make that sound really nice. Um, so if you're in C major especially, throwing in that E major chord. So uh, the major three chord. So. that you don't always have to stick with the exact melody. You can expound the melody a lot. So use tenths, root, fifth, and then the tenth. Also use the little pattern, root, fifth, root, second, third. Okay, so um, those two are really helpful. Now in the right hand with your melody, I like to kind of expound it, and you could even add a little bit of a rhythm to it.
So I'm just kind of messing around there. It's nothing brilliant. It's just kind of dinking around. So just kind of mess around with those chords. Now you can substitute what we call relative minor chords uh, for a major chord. So for instance, instead of that F major chord, you could use the relative minor, which is D minor. The way you find a relative minor is taking your major chord, take your F major chord, go down three half steps. So D, D minor. So instead of this, they actually correspond quite nicely. So. Rather than you can go. I think that's a really nice little way to um, spice up the harmony a little bit. And with jazz, uh, you can always use like passing tones uh, to ornament your right hand. So. That's kind of how jazz is. You, you got to do what works and then take out everything else. So every time is different, but if you like something, write in the chord. So say that you liked that D minor chord rather than the F, write in D minor uh, over, over that note. And reading from a lead sheet is really fun because um, it gives you a lot of freedom and you can improv around it. Use a lot of chromaticism too when you're in jazz. That's always really fun. So. That's it like all I'm doing is stepping down a half step on those. That's really fun. That's a good little technique. And then using like chromatic scales. You want to use them not every single measure and you don't want to use the same thing every time but just those are some thoughts all right so there's some jazz improv advice coming from someone who's not that great at jazz but um, I wanted just to keep the videos and the requests open for anything so hopefully that's been able to help I've noticed when I've teach, taught that to my students they're able to take those ideas and mold them into their own styles which is really what jazz is all about finding your own niche finding your own style so I think those are solid concepts that I presented today hopefully they've been helpful um, if anyone has questions, my email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. I'd be happy to hear from you. Any comments or any further video requests, I'd be happy to do for you. And thanks for joining me today.